Stop using ChatGPT. Stop using DeepSeek. This might just be the best app for researchers, scientists, and students, and it's called SciSpace. SciSpace is an all-in-one tool. Now, let me give you a quick 30 second rundown. So this is what it looks like when you first log in. You can see that there are so many different capabilities. So you have your library and your notebooks. You can chat with PDFs, which mean that you can upload PDFs and ask questions and interrogate them. You can look at literature reviews and try to find literature. There's an AI writer where you can actually write. You can also find topics. You can paraphrase, generate citations, extract data detect AI and also get PDFs into videos. It's a really, really cool platform. But what I want to talk about in today's video is something that has just been released. Now, if you remember a couple of videos ago, I spoke about DeepSeek and how it had this like deep feature. Now that's all great, but that's not for academics. This is the first platform to introduce a deep review. Deep review is the first AI research agent that thinks and works like a researcher. It helps you to conduct systematic literature reviews, it helps to refine queries, analyzes abstracts, citations, references, and it really helps by delivering highly relevant research papers in minutes. This has literally just been released. I'm probably one of the first people to start speaking about it. Let's try it in today's video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by just typing in some keywords. So I'm going to say actin myosin uh, cortex. Okay, so I'm just putting in my keywords and the first thing that you're going to do is take a look at some of the questions that have been given to me. Now, one of the most important things is that you give a good question that is very specific and tailored to what you're looking for. So the first thing it asks me is, what kind of cells are you looking for? What kind of organisms are you looking for? Are you focusing on a specific process or factors? Because if I just typed in this question, then I would only get a very kind of general answer. But this is going in so much deeper and then I'm enhancing the research question even more. Make sure that the literature that I get at the end of this uh, search on SciSpace will give me the best and most uh, relevant and tailored literature that I will then use for my literature review. So it's a really, really uh, deep review. Even if you're someone who doesn't quite know how to search for literature or like the keywords to use, this is a really great step-by-step uh, -step, like hand-holding activity. So you can see that it's looking through 1,050 papers that are relevant and it's now searching through 203 papers. And it's interesting because I'm looking at the, the research papers and this was my PhD uh, thesis topic and I'm seeing papers that I recognize. So that's a good first sign. And then the next step now that it's found the papers is reviewing the citations and seeing if there's any other additional kind of work or research that it can find through uh, the database. So I'm really confident that it's going to pull out the best possible papers for me. As you can see, it's given me a really nice summary and then it's given me kind of key points. So these key points will form the basis of my literature review essentially. So you can see number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then there'll be like a nine and a conclusion essentially. So if I was writing a literature review, this is the order that I would write and then the research papers are also there. Now, if you keep scrolling down, what you can see is a nice kind of table with all of these papers presented to you. And then you can add columns to kind of create a bit of a research uh, reference list essentially. So for me at the moment, I just have insights. So it's saying what the summary is, but it's also linking it to my question. So some of them says, for example, this does not specifically address the regulation, but it does address this thing. So whilst it might not be important for one part, it's important for the other part. So that's really important as well, because you still want to include those when you're discussing other aspects. And then you can add different columns. So you can add like the abstracts, the methods, you can add limitations, um, results. You can just add loads and loads of nice columns, which again, just it, you know, this is saving you so much time. This is something that would have taken me weeks, easily weeks on end to create, but I'm be I've been able to do it in just the time that I've been, you know, filming this video, which is less than, you know, less than five minutes so far. And I've been able to create this amazing table that has, uh, you know, had a deep review into my topic that has been able to pull out the most relevant papers um, in this table of information that is perfect for my literature review question. 
um, and then I can export that as well and so then I can you know use that in my methods or in maybe the appendix or something if I want to present all this information. You can also filter uh, by publication type by year so that's something that I think you might want to do if you want to limit uh, the year or the publication type so just focusing on journal articles or just fo focusing on like primary research papers. So I think this is a, such an amazing groundbreaking way of running a literature review uh, search for research papers that actually I have not seen done by any other AI tool. So I think this is really fantastic and it's really pulling out all of the uh, papers that you can possibly need without having to do multiple searches. If you would like to try SciSpace and I genuinely think you'll really enjoy it and I think they will transform your literature review uh, search method. I have got two really generous discount codes which I'll leave over here which includes 40% off of the annual plan. So I'll leave that over here so you can go check it out and I'll also leave all the details in my description down below. But there is something new coming and it's called uh, SciSpace Browser Control. And this browser control is an upcoming feature. With this, what you're able to do is access research papers beyond SciSpace's database. So you can search Google Scholars database or um, Science Direct or PubMed. So essentially what you're able to do is what you just saw there where I did a deep review, um, at that point it then goes to Google Scholar and it types in the question in Google Scholar because it can kind of like identify the boxes, um, text box in Google Scholar. It types in the question and then it pulls out the top searches from there. And then it types in the question in PubMed and it pulls out the top searches from there. And it all brings it together to add this into uh, into deep review um, and then on top of that if you have got access to university login or if you have if you're on the IP uh, address of your university it can log in directly and gain access to the research paper to give you um, an actual summary from when it reads the research paper but that's yet to be released so this sounds really cool. It's, it really sounds like the next level um, of where AI and academic kind of tools are going to be going. If you're interested in joining the waitlist for browser control, then I'll leave the uh, waitlist for it down below. Now I want to show you one or two of my favorite features when it comes to SciSpace and some of the things that I just cannot stop using when I'm using it for my own work. So the first one is um, chats with the PDF. And I know loads of other AI tools have this platform and have this kind of capability, but let me show you how it works on SciSpace. So what you can do is upload a research paper or any PDF um, so I've uploaded this one which is a research paper that's quite long um, and there are so many different things that you can do with this this is really cool so one of the first thing that you can do is you can select the text that you want to conversate with so normally on the other platforms you just have the whole block of text the whole PDF but here you can select a bit and then you can say explain that bit and then I can ask further questions about just that section which I really think it's interesting just isolating uh, a part of the PDF. Another thing that you can do is explain maths uh, equations or tables if you have any. I didn't have any in my research paper but I really wish that I had this capability when I was doing my PhD. Um, and then you can ask general questions as well about uh, the paper more generally and you can also get a podcast of the paper too which I think is just absolutely mind-blowing and that's just with the PDF capability. And then I want to show you the templates that I mentioned earlier which links into the whole literature review topic that I'm speaking about in this video. So what you can do is you can click on this template and then you can say start now. So what it does is it gives you a breakdown of writing a literature review. So it's giving you all the steps for how to write and then it kind of prompts you through the writing process. Um, so what you can do here is you can click on start writing and then it will ask you for what your topic is. So I'm going to say um, the impact of actin and myosin on the movement in the cell cortex. So just the same as what I've done before. I want to see what the difference can be. And automatically within a few seconds, I have a kind of outline breakdown of this subject area, which, you know, again, <laughs> saves me so much time and also is pulling this information out from research and from literature so it's all correct um, and you can actually search for citations about these as well. So now I'm going to search for a citation about this first paragraph and I can search on my library, I can search um, on just general suggestions and this research paper that I've just added now was actually one of the research papers that I used a lot during my PhD so it's really comforting to see research papers here that I would have used when I was studying as well so it just validates that this tool 
actually works and is actually pulling out the most relevant papers. And then when you scroll right to the bottom, it adds the citation to your reference list and you can change the format as well of that. So I think that's really cool. And as you write, you can just expand that notebook and just get more and more detail and kind of go back and forth between your literature review and um, the text that you're writing. Overall, I really think that this new deep review feature that SciSpace have launched is a game changer in the academic AI space. We've seen this whole deep review being added into, for example, ChatGPT or DeepSeek, but that's great, but those are not platforms that are tailored towards academia and used for students and um, are presenting us with research papers and citations and information that we can actually use uh, for our literature review or for our uh, research searches straight away and you have the upcoming browser control which again I think will change the game take it to the next level when it's actually released and like I said join the waitlist I'll leave the link for it down below so please check my description I'll have the link to try SciSpace with my very generous discount code well, I would love to hear if you've tried SciSpace before I don't think I've spoken about SciSpace on my channel before so I'm really excited but I've used it so much so I'm really excited to bring it to you finally on my YouTube YouTube uh, platform and let me know if you've enjoyed it. I'd love to hear from you and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!